Hey guys, today I'm going to do a full canon history of the Star Wars galaxy. I wanted to do a full Legends history of it, but the poll overwhelmingly said canon history, not Legends history, so I guess I'm doing a canon history. 25,000 years before Luke Skywalker blew the Death Star to pieces, the hyperdrive was invented. At the same time, the Galactic Republic was founded then known as the Old Republic. 22 core worlds, including Alderaan, became the first systems in the Republic. Also, around this time, a bunch of people who could use the Force got together and formed an order called the Jedi Order. The Jedi started up on the planet ak where they built the first Jedi Temple. Then, one Jedi decided that the true power of the Force could not be achieved through contemplation and passivity, but through the dark side of the Force. When he suggested this idea to the Council, they just said, that's a stupid idea, you're a stupid idea, you're fired. And he was given the sack and he was now off the order, an outcast. But people agreed with his ideas, and those people who agreed with him formed an order called the Sith. This series of events that led to the creation of the Sith came to be known as the Hundred Year Darkness. The Hundred Year Darkness sparked an eternity of war between the Jedi and the Sith. The Sith often ruled slave empires, Long have Sith empires been built upon the backs of slaves. To carry on this tradition, we will require millions. During one battle in 3966 BBY, the Great Scourge of Malachor, there was not a single survivor. Every participant was petrified into rock. Eventually, the Jedi drove the Sith from the planet Coruscant, where they built a Jedi temple on top of an old Sith shrine to symbolise that they were better than the Sith. The last Jedi-Sith war ended in 10,032 BBY when the Sith made a last stand on the planet Ruson. There, the Sith were wiped out and there would never be another Sith again because they were all dead and they would never return. Except for this one Sith called Darth Bane, who, upon being the last surviving Sith, created this system called the Rule of Two. This was where he would train a new Sith as his Sith Apprentice, and when said Sith Apprentice believed he or she was good enough a fighter, they would challenge their Sith Master to a fight and hopefully kill them. Then train their own Apprentice who would one day kill them and drop each. The idea is each Sith would be better in combat than the last, so eventually there would be this god-level Sith who was maxed out in everything, who no one could defeat. And while everyone thought the Sith were dead, they existed in secret, following the rule of two for a thousand years. There were only ever two Sith at one time in the entire millennia. The Sith weren't the Jedi's only enemies. The Zygerian Slave Empire and the Mandalorians were also enemies of the Jedi. They defeated the Zygerian Slave Empire but when they went to war with the Mandalorians, the Jedi Temple was sacked. During the sacking of the Jedi Temple, the Mandalorians stole the Darksaber from the Jedi. The Darksaber was a lightsaber built by a Mandalorian called Tar Vizsla, a Mandalorian who was in the Jedi. Despite the disaster at the Jedi Temple, the Jedi won the war and Mandalore was left an uninhabitable wasteland as a result. The supposed end of the Sith led to the formation of the Galactic Republic, and Coruscant was the capital of the galaxy. The Javin Code was established to ensure fair treatment of prisoners. The Republic began establishing trading colonies and settling new planets. To do this, they either cut a deal with their native people there, or squished them like bugs. The species Everini left their home planet, Everon, and they were surprised to find that other life existed. But once they did, they decided to kill it all. They were declared outlaws by the Republic, forcing them to kill only covertly. Then the Republic almost entirely demilitarised, 
apart from a defence coalition and the Jedi. They expanded into the outer rim of the galaxy. Then, a ship crashes into a space station in hyperspace, causing the debris of both objects to pop out of hyperspace at random points in the galaxy, causing chaos everywhere. After that, the Republic was at war with the Nihil, who were puppets of a Neverini family who wanted revenge on the Jedi and the Republic. In 32 BBY, Jedi Master Sifo Dyas sensed a war was on the horizon. So he said to the Jedi Council, I sense a war is coming. We need to get these cloners, called the Kaminoans, to clone us, a massive army, so we can be ready for war. But the Jedi Council said, that's a stupid idea. You're a stupid idea, but you're not fired. But sifo gets the Kaminoans to clone a massive army, born and bred to fight a war anyway, just in case. Also in 32 BBY, there is a dispute between the Galactic Republic and the Trade Federation, a merged company of all major private trading companies in the galaxy. The dispute is about the taxation of trade to the outlying star systems in the galaxy. So, the Trade Federation cut off all imports to the planet of Naboo. But, a combined force of Gun Guns, Jedi and Naboo kicked them off Naboo and reopened the trade routes. At this time, one of the two Sith was Darth Sidious, or Palpatine as his public name was. He came from Naboo. He took this opportunity to pull some strings and become the Chancellor of the Republic. Becoming Chancellor was step one in Darth Sidious's plan to take over the galaxy. Eight years later in 24 BBY, a bunch of people in the outer reaches of the galaxy decide they are not content with living under the Republic anymore. The government is corrupt and the outer rim planets receive less protection from pirates and criminals but have to pay the same taxes as everyone else. So thousands of businesses, thousands of solar systems, thousands of planets all secede from the Republic in droves and form the Confederacy of Independent Systems or the CIS, better known as the Separatist Alliance. Two years later in 22 BBY, two Jedi and a Republic Senator are caught trespassing on the Separatist capital of Geonosis, where they had no right to be. They were arrested and sentenced to death, but the Republic tries to stop the execution through military force and invades Geonosis with their clone army that the Kaminoans built for them, so sifo was right. The planet falls to the Republic, but the Confederate leadership escapes, and most of the Confederate forces stationed there also escape. This began the Clone Wars. The Separatist movement was led by Count Dooku, who used to be a Jedi, and now was Darth Sidious's Sith Apprentice. His Sith name was Darth Tyrannus. For the next three years the Clone Wars raged, but eventually Count Dooku, General Grievous and the Separatist Council die. Chancellor Palpatine framed the Jedi Order for treason. He then had the clone army kill them all and almost all the Jedi were wiped out. Out of 10,000 Jedi, only several survived. Among the survivors were Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda and Cal Kestis. Palpatine became Emperor of the First Galactic Empire. A bunch of Jedi fallen to the dark side became part of a group of Force users called Inquisitors, whose job it was to kill Jedi. Jedi Anakin Skywalker became Sith Lord Darth Vader and was Sidious's new apprentice. For the next two and a half decades, the fascist Galactic Empire reigned over the galaxy. Everything in the galaxy was controlled by the Empire, which maintained a massive military, as Emperor Palpatine transferred more and more of the central government's powers to the planetary and regional governors, which had all been appointed by the Empire. All propaganda and holonet was controlled by the Empire. All resistance to Imperial rule, passive or active, peaceful or violent, was crushed. The Empire was also planning on creating a Death Star, a planet-destroying super-weapon. The Empire was extremely xenophobic toward alien species, 
Some were genocided, some were enslaved. However, Palpatine could allow select few non-humans to rise to high positions in the Empire if he thought they were too vital or too highly skilled or too knowledgeable to kill. For example, arguably the best military mind in Star Wars history, Thrawn of the species Chiss, was one of these. The guy in charge of the Inquisitors was also one, and the Grand Vizier in the Empire, Maz Armida, was in that number. He was a Shagrian. Shockingly, people didn't like this, so rebel groups sprang up everywhere. Most of them hoped to only free one planet or system from the Empire. Eventually, the resistance groups began to speak to each other. In 4BBY, they organised. They joined together into larger groups, Phoenix Cell and Masasi Group, notably. This began the Galactic Civil War. Two years later, in 2BBY, most of these groups organised into THE Rebellion, determined to shove the Empire right to the dust. And remember that Death Star the Empire was building? Well, the Rebellion tried to steal the Death Star plans in the Battle of Scarif, and succeeded. For the second time in its 19 year existence, the Empire had lost a major battle, and the Rebellion had their first victory over the Empire. And the Rebellion also had the plans to the Death Star. The Empire then used their Death Star to destroy the planet Alderaan, just to tell everyone that they could destroy their entire planet if they wanted. Now that the Empire had such great power, there was no way the Rebellion could overthrow the Empire. It seemed that the Empire had won. The Death Star's next target was the Rebellion's headquarters, but the Empire doesn't know where the Rebellion keeps its headquarters. Eventually, the Empire finds them on the fourth moon of the planet Yavin. The Death Star arrives at Yavin to destroy the fourth moon there. The Empire was feeling confident, as the Rebels had no firepower that could significantly damage the Death Star. But the Rebellion had dissected the Death Star plans and concocted a plan to destroy it. Despite all the odds weighing against them, the Rebels nevertheless prevailed. The Death Star was destroyed. 19 years of work, so much resources, and about a million lives gone in one explosion. Had the Death Star fired its laser, Rebel High Command and a few thousand Rebels would have died. But when the Death Star exploded, roughly a million died. The Rebellion had been saved, but was it worth it? The war dragged on for four years. Three years after the Battle of Yavin, the Rebellion's ground forces fought their only major battle, the Battle of Hoth, where they got annihilated. Naturally, the Empire began building another Death Star. They deliberately leaked information about it to the Rebellion, so the Rebellion would send their entire navy to destroy the Death Star, but that was what the Empire wanted. They could wipe out the Rebel Navy in one battle and hopefully end this war. The plan was put into action. The entire rebel fleet was sent to the Battle of Endor to destroy the Death Star. Emperor Palpatine's plan to destroy the Rebellion backfired on him. The Death Star was destroyed in that battle, and he and his apprentice Vader also died in that battle. With the rebel victory at the Battle of Endor, the Empire would go on to mass murder the entire populations of a dozen planets to punish them for failing to protect the Emperor. This mass murder was called Operation Cinder. Then, the Empire lost the war in a desperate last stand at the Battle of Jakku. The Rebellion was renamed the New Republic, and they had replaced the Empire as government of the galaxy. The Empire was defeated. The Republic was created, a major war had just ended and peace was restored. But not for long though, because that peace lasted a whopping 29 years before, surprise surprise, another major war started. Because apparently, people in Star Wars just love starting wars. See, when it became clear for all to see that the Empire would lose the war, a bunch of Imperials took some Imperial resources 
and went to hide in the unknown regions of the galaxy to rebuild the Imperial military and reconquer the galaxy. They had even built a massive cannon into a planet. That planet would take energy from a nearby star, focus that energy into said cannon, and then fire a shot so powerful that it could destroy five planets in one hit. This weapon was called Starkiller Base. The new empire forming in the Unknown Regions was called the First Order, and with its super weapon called Starkiller Base, it has the power to destroy entire solar systems. Everything they were doing was in complete violation of the Surrender Agreement that the Empire had signed, by the way, after the Battle of Jakku. When the First Order revealed its existence to the galaxy in 28 BBY, the New Republic was a relatively weak government, thanks to infighting between two political factions, the Centrists, who wanted a stronger central government, and the Populists, who wanted more autonomy. The Republic did absolutely nothing to stop the First Order expanding its territory and influence and power. So, a branch of the Republic military broke off from the Republic to form a paramilitary organisation called the Resistance, who believed the Republic was not taking the First Order threat seriously enough. The Resistance resolved to keep an eye on the First Order, who they believed were acting sus. The Republic, on the other hand, was willing to do whatever the flip necessary and make whatever concessions necessary to avoid war with the First Order. Also during this time, the trans hydean borderlands had come to a buffer zone between the Republic and the expanding First Order. As you can see, this was a cold war between the Republic, the First Order and the Resistance. Luke Skywalker was believed to be the last Jedi alive, and there was a map to find him. The Resistance wanted to find him so he could help them, and the First Order wanted to find him so they could kill him. The First Order tries to get that map, and fails, thanks to a defecting trooper on their side. Now, both the First Order and the Resistance are in a desperate race to find the map before the other. This leads to the first ever open battle between the Resistance and the First Order on the planet Takodana. For the first time ever, the civilians watch the two sides fight. The Resistance won decisively, easily annihilating the First Order division and forcing its remnants to retreat with minimal casualties. This is considered the start of a war between the First Order and the Resistance, creatively named the First Order Resistance War. The First Order then decides to use their Starkiller base. They fire it at the New Republic capital, Hosnian Prime. Most of the Republic Navy is destroyed there, along with most of the Republic government. The remaining government members take what's left of their navy to protect their home planets, but it will only take a few weeks for the First Order to overwhelm these fleets and take over every major star system in the galaxy. The last major threat to the First Order's conquering of the galaxy was the Resistance. While only being a few hundred strong compared to the First Order's hundreds of millions, if not billions, if not trillions, the Resistance seemed at a disadvantage. However, the Resistance were specially designed and formed to spy on and, if necessary, fight the First Order. And the Resistance had spies absolutely everywhere. Worse still for the First Order, the First Order doesn't know where the Resistance base is. So, they send troops to take military control of the galaxy, and eventually they find the Resistance base on the planet Dakar. The First Order prepares to destroy it with Starkiller Base, but the Resistance finds a weakness in Starkiller Base, exploits said weakness, and the entire planet is destroyed. And hundreds of millions of First Order members die when 20 Resistance fighter pilots find a weakness in the First Order's super weapon and destroy it. The Resistance is saved, but not for long. The First Order 
attacks the Resistance base and destroys it. The First Order pursues the Resistance across the galaxy, and the First Order manages to reduce the Resistance number of personnel to about 20 out of hundreds, but fails to destroy the Resistance entirely. Eventually, after losing almost all of its leadership and personnel, and The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker, having to sacrifice his life, the Resistance escapes. The Resistance did have some forces that survived the First Order attack, simply by being away from the Resistance base when the First Order attacked it. The First Order had failed to crush the Resistance entirely, so an open war carried on between the two sides for about another year. During the Battle of Endor, Darth Sidious was destroyed, or rather, his body was destroyed, but his essence was transferred to a clone of himself. So now he's alive, and he's been hiding all this time. Meanwhile, his followers have built a fleet of a thousand and eighty Star Destroyers, each one with a massive cannon that can destroy an entire planet, because apparently in Star Wars, the bad guys just love destroying planets. The entire fleet is on the planet Exegol, and the Resistance wants to attack that fleet before it can try conquer the galaxy. However, the Resistance manage to convince a lot of people that they can stop this fleet and have to stop this fleet. In fact, they convince so many people that they have to and can stop this fleet that 14,000 random people bring spaceships to stop this fleet. The entire resistance plus the 14,000 ships easily takes down the fleet of planet-killing star destroyers. With this new victory, people begin rising up all over the galaxy against First Order rule. That's as far as we've got in Star Wars canon so far. So make sure to click the card on the top right hand corner, like, share, subscribe. Bye.